What's up guys, it's Jay back again with Tech Everything, and today we're going to be doing a mini ITX Ryzen 7 build. Now as always with my builds, I try to pick unique components and cases that maybe you haven't necessarily seen before. Generally always it's going to be a mini ITX. So starting off, I have the Geek H170 case. More on that later. It's a really, really cool case that I'm guessing you've never seen or heard of before. We're going to do the Ryzen 7 1700. See if we can do a quick overclock on there as well. Get some better performance. I have the Galax XSOC White 1060. So that's cool. I picked this card because I thought it would match the white and black scheme. It's got all white build with white black backplate and white fans with LEDs in the inside. So that's cool. Going with a 500 watt EVJ power supply. Nothing crazy there, but enough to power this rig with ease. And the Biostar X370 motherboard. Now this is the first Mini ITX motherboard on the market. So it's really our only option at the moment. And let's see how it works in this build. For RAM, I'm going with 32 gigs of Corsair DDR4, 2400 RAM. And for storage, I'm going with a 256 gig Intel 600 pig. Okay, so I've got all the main components, the motherboard with the Ryzen cooler that came included with the 1700. So we're gonna try that out. It has some nice LEDs that should look good inside this case. Uh, the power supply here, as well as the graphics card. Now it's interesting to note this case can actually support a 120, dual 120 millimeter radiator here. Uh, so a 240 and it really, it can support a lot more stuff than I'm putting inside of here, but um, we're just gonna test it out with these components today. Maybe down the line, I'll throw in a, a liquid cooler and we can see what kind of temps and performance we can eke out of the 1700. But for today, we're gonna go with this sort of budget build uh, featuring these components. So I have everything, let's get started. So we got the motherboard in there now. As you can see, this case has space for a ton more stuff. There are drive mounting brackets here. There are dual 80 millimeter fan, millimeter fan mounting brackets here. I could mount 120 millimeter fans or obviously a radiator here. You can mount something here, a radiator or a fan as well, and more drives down at the bottom. So this is a big, big case for these components, but I think it'll be fine. I just wanted to see how it looks. I think it'll look pretty cool when it's all done still. Now this case is all acrylic. Everything is plastic acrylic and there are metal pieces that connect them and obviously metal screws, but it's really light um, and it looks a lot cooler and more expensive than it actually is. Yeah. 
that last screw is not connecting. I'll have to figure out why that is. Obviously, this is not a modular power supply. You would be, you would do well to grab a modular power supply. But in the interest of keeping things nice and cheap and affordable, I grabbed this guy for like 40 bucks. So here we have our CPU headers. CPU power. So we can route that like so. Now there are some routing, some routing lines. Uh, in the back here, there is a little cutout to route your cable. Uh, with the with the panel on though it is a little bit difficult to do so you can route these under here I don't know if I can fit all of them in there and with the non non modular power supply I don't think it really is going to make a difference anyway so let's do a test fit and then if I need to go back I'll I'll route them underneath and make it look all clean Okay, so we've got the basic assembly all taken care of now. You can see there's a lot of empty space over here. That's where normally your drives, some fans, and your rad would go. But we're not going to do that for this build. Let's finish it off and see how it looks. The system also comes with a cool blue Vandal switch or LED power button. You've seen this kind of button before I used it in my S for mini build. This one just comes with a nice sleeved braided cable so it's nice and clean there. And that goes right here. And that is where your power button sits. There's also this nice little piece of acrylic that you just screw into place that holds your GPU where it should be. So you don't need any screws or anything like that. Now, aesthetically, it's not necessarily pleasing, but at least it's on the back of your case. No big deal there. So that was the build. Let me know what you think and what you want to see next in the comments. I can do a benchmark video for this, but it's a 1060 and a 1700. I feel like for the most part, people know exactly what kind of performance 
they're gonna get from that kind of setup. But if that's something you guys wanna see, let me know. I'd be more than happy to do it for you, no problem. I haven't run benchmarks yet, that's why you haven't uh, seen them. I would, could've just put them in this video, but I didn't. Uh, some interesting notes about this build. This case is super easy to build in. I had no issues. It was a breeze sliding through. Everything lines up pretty nicely. Now actually assembling and building this case is a bit of a nightmare. It's all acrylic. Um, every piece comes off and separates. So it's really uh, very interesting. I, I started shooting a video on assembly and doing a review of this, um, but I haven't finished it yet because honestly, it was, it was a bit of a bear trying to get this thing all assembled and put together. But once you get it all set up, it's really cool. For $100, you get a super unique looking case. It looks almost exactly like that Alienware system, the Tri-GPU setup that they, they have over there. Uh, obviously, it doesn't, it doesn't take as many graphics cards, but there's also an MATX version of this as well, so you can look out for that. Uh, if you really wanted to pick this up, you can pick it up at geekstore.com. Also, I want to thank uh, Galax uh, and the Geek Store for sending out both of these components. Uh, everything else you may start seeing pop up in some other builds. I'm thinking of doing some more Ryzen stuff. I was gonna do a 1600 in here, but I was able to get the 1700 for open box for like 270 bucks. So I figured that was a win-win there for, for everybody. As for components, as you can see, I went with a power supply that did not have modular cables or even completely blacked out in terms of sleeving cables. And that's totally fine for a system like this because you can't see inside unless you have LEDs going and, and everything's lit up. Otherwise, it's, it's really nice and black. It almost hides your components, especially if you're in a dark room. If it's light, you can kind of peek in. Like I can see the white graphics card because it has a nice backplate and all that good stuff. But otherwise, it, it does a really good job of concealing your components. And with some cool LEDs like you saw earlier, you can kind of give it a little, a little flare that pops out when you want it to. So I really had fun doing this build. Uh, I like this case, I like these components. I think it's, it's pretty cool. Probably gonna go for something a little more powerful in this setup next time. I think I'll try to do a 240 millimeter rad and maybe an X299 build when that new ASRock X299 motherboard, mini ITX motherboard comes out. I think that will be perfect to go in here. Uh, these components aren't necessarily super powerful that I, that I picked for here. Uh, probably could fit a lot more beef inside of this case. If you want a little more info on this build, you can hop over to the website. I'll drop a link below for that. And you can also pick up any of these components. I'll drop links for them below as well. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video. I'm Jay, this is Tech Everything, and I'll see you next time.